Good morning and welcome to Christians Aren't Sheep, a beginner's guide to meditation. My name is Ron Heinrichs and I'm the host of the show. This channel is totally dedicated to Isaiah 40 verse 31. All those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will rise up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Amen? Yeah. And in the line of uh, waiting on the Lord or meditating, uh, we're presently doing a little bit of reading, a little morning devotional to help settle your mind from all the daily concerns. And I did promise you something new and a little more advanced this starting now. And after we're done the devotional, for those of you who want to stick around, we'll uh, do a little bit more. This morning's reading is Friends for Life. The uh, companion verse that goes along with this was Samuel, 1 Samuel 20, verse 26 to 34. I'll just read a little bit here. Jonathan was grieved at his father's shameful treatment of David. Okay. Friends for life. William Cowper lived from 1731 to 1800. The English poet found a friend in his pastor, John Newton. Uh, he was from 1725 to 1807. The former slave trader. Cowper suffered from depression and anxiety, attempting to die by suicide more than once. When Newton visited him, they'd go on long walks together and talk about God. Thinking that Cowper would benefit from engaging creatively and having a reason to write his poetry, the minister had the idea to compile a hymnal Cowper contributed many songs, including God Moves in a Mysterious Way. When Newton moved to another church, he and Cowper remained strong friends and corresponded regularly for the rest of Cowper's life. I see parallels between the strong friendship of Cowper and Newton with that of David and Jonathan in the Old Testament. After David defeated Goliath, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, loving him as himself. Although Jonathan was the son of King Saul, he defended David against the king's jealousy and anger, asking his father why David should be put to death. In response, Saul hurled his spear at him and to kill him. Jonathan dodged the weapon and was grieved at this shameful treatment of his friend. For both sets of friends, their bond was life-giving as they spurred each other on to serve and love God. How might you simil similarly encourage a friend today? The thought for today, what role does friendship play in your sense of well-being? How could you show God's love to someone and build them up? And the prayer for this morning, Jesus, help me to enjoy your friendship and fellowship. Amen? Amen. Okay. For those of you that just want the daily devotional, have a great day. For those of you who want to go a little bit deeper, we're going to start reading some excerpts from this book called You Are the Placebo. The writer is Dr. Joe Dispenza. 
He's a New York Times bestseller. He's got a number of books out. And they get pretty deep. <laughs> this morning, I'm just going to read you a little portion of the introduction, or the foreword, actually, just to uh, get your taste buds going. Like most of his fans, I look forward to Joe Dispenza's provocative ideas with relish, combining solid scientific evidence with stimulating insights. Joe stretches the horizons of the possible by extending the boundaries of the known. He takes science more seriously than most scientists. And in this fascinating book, he extrapolates the most recent discoveries in epigenetics, neuroplasticity, and psychoneuroimmunology to their logical conclusion. That conclusion is an exciting one. You and every other human being are shaping your brain and body by the thoughts you think, the emotions you feel, the intentions you hold, and the transcendental states you experience. You are the placebo invites you to harness this knowledge to create a new body a new life for yourself. And tomorrow we'll, uh, like I say, we'll read a few excerpts from it and uh, see what you think. All right. This is uh, my new studio. Enjoy your day. See you tomorrow.